Good morning, traders. Uh, good morning, traders. Uh, today, we're going to discuss uh, a simple Fibonacci wave uh, forecast uh, trading uh, method. All right, so there is a video already uh, posted at 24 Elliott Wave YouTube channel. Uh, the title of the video How to Combine Fibonacci and Elliott Wave Strategies. All right, that video has been a very popular video for traders to know how to combine Fibonacci and Elliott Wave a principle. So today we want to use a specific Fibonacci ratio to forecast, okay, the end of the fifth wave, all right? So you will notice if you are already a subscriber to our channel, I have been recording a video about how to use the earlier wave channels to forecast the end of the fifth wave. So if you have already watched it, good. So this is one way to forecast, okay, uh, the end of the fifth wave. There are many ways that we can forecast the end of the fifth wave. And today I want to reveal to traders the secret of using Fibonacci ratio to forecast the end of the fifth wave. All right, so now we are maturing, okay. As earlier wave practitioner, we know now, we know the guidelines that we should follow when we want to count wave. Now we want to go to the next stage, which means we want to start forecasting the financial market. And if we are trying to forecast the end of the fifth wave, we are trying to pick the top of the market or to pick, to predict a reversal. Okay, so if there is a trend, the trend will be formed on the first wave, second wave, third wave, fourth wave, and the fifth wave. And at the end of the fifth wave, we are expecting a reversal to the downside after an uptrend. And we, re we are predicting, okay, a reversal at the end of a downtrend, okay, a bullish reversal at the end of a downtrend when we are trying to forecast the end of the fifth wave. So allow me one more time to say to trader that when we are talking about uh, wave forecast is an expectation, it's not an exact science, it's not guaranteed that what we are expecting, that's exactly what will happen. But we, we are using the earlier wave forecast to have a bit of idea how the market will behave. And uh, if the market is fulfilling our expectation, so to speak, we have an edge and we can profit from it in the financial market. The area we forecast allow market participants to predict the financial market and also to maximize profit in the financial market. We can use the area we forecast, especially when we are forecasting the end of the fifth way, to manage risk. So you don't want to buy okay, at the top of the market. Uh, which is completely crazy. A lot of uh, okay, a private uh, investor that are not sophisticated are usually buying at the top of the market. This has happened in 2007 before the financial crisis. So by knowing or having a bit of idea where the market is likely to top, we have an edge. But doesn't mean that definitely the, the market we go around on YouTube, on Twitter, on Facebook, talking to, to everybody that want to listen to us, that the market will top at this specific price level. Don't do that, okay? Don't do that because you'll never hear Goldman Sachs or all these people say that the market will top exactly at 20075, all right? So keep in your mind that there is a high chance that the market may find a resistance there or you are just aware that the fifth wave may end there, all right? Let's move on to, okay, the topic of today, focusing the fifth wave with the Fibonacci ratio. The ratio that we want to use is 61.8%. All right, so if you want to know more about Fibonacci trading, go to www.dayprotraders YouTube channel, subscribe and watch every video about Fibonacci okay, retracement, Fibonacci extension. And the ratio, Fibonacci ratio that we're going to use today is 61.8% Fibonacci ratio. Apart from the 61.8%, I will draw also your attention to the 38.2% Fibonacci ratio. But the key Fibonacci ratio that we're going to use is 61.8%. So first thing first, very simple. You want to know the law of the first wave. So on my chart here, 
I have my preliminary wave count for the Dow Jones Industrial Average. Feel free to disagree with my wave count. Okay, first wave, second wave, third wave, fourth wave, and we are now supposed to be the fifth wave. That remains to be seen for new traders, all right? The earlier wave count is dynamic, all right? We are following the price. So if the price prints something out, we already start counting our wave. The wave count is never definitive. We count the wave, and now we are now watching the price, okay? So here we are, so first wave, second wave, third wave, fourth wave. We are now, in our view, with the information that we are having on this chart, it looks to me that we are now in the fifth wave. Is it a fifth wave? We will see. Um, if the market confirms it, we will see, okay? So now, how do we forecast the end of the fifth wave? There are many ways that we can forecast the fifth wave, the end of the fifth wave, but this time we want to use 61.8% Fibonacci ratio. So for that, we want to know the low of the first wave. Here it is. So you see this candle here? So I'll, I'll, I'm paying attention to what this session here, and we want to read the low when I'm moving across. So watch that. Keep your eyes there. You'll see a low there. So, so if you want to play with it, you can also check it out. The low is at the 9614. All right, 9614, that's the low of our first wave. That's the first thing you want to note down, the low of the first wave. You need it. And then you want to know the high of the third area wave. Here it is, the high. Keep, wa keep watching this session and you will see the high of the third wave. The high of the third wave is at 1851. We already know it. That's the two quarters line on my chart because I see two traders that are trading the Dow Jones, priority to bullish signal above that level and priority to bear signal below that level. A video that I have posted at two for stock trader YouTube channel. The most recent video about the Dow Jones industrial average. Hold on a second. I'm looking in my book here because I know that every video that I posted on YouTube I'm looking for the title of that video, so I may give it to you if you want to check it out. Um, Dow Jones Index, Advanced Technical Analysis, Tips and Tricks. Dow Jones Index, Advanced Technical Analysis, Tips and Tricks by 24 Stock Trader YouTube channel. All right, so we want to know the law of... Uh, the first wave, and we want to know the high of the third area wave. The next stage, we use the high of the third wave minus the low of the first wave. All right? So if my calculation is correct, if you do that, it will come up to 8737. So the, the high of the third area wave minus the low of... Uh, the first wave, that's the first thing you need to compute. So, according to my calculation for the Dow Jones Industrial Average, for this example, this illustration is exactly at the high, minus the, the high of the third wave, minus the low, is 8737, all right? Roughly, all right? But then, then we will multiply the result by 61.8%. No 61.8, but 61.8 percent. Don't forget the percent, okay? So the high of the third in your wave minus the low of the first wave multiplied by 61.8 percent. All right? If you do that with for the Dow Jones, you will you will get okay 5399. That number is very important for us because we will use it to focus at the end of the fifth wave. So the high of the third in your wave minus the low of the first wave multiplied by 61.8%, we will get uh, 5399 for the Dow Jones. So whether you are the Five minute time frame, hourly time frame, daily time frame, counting the area wave. Now you are at the end of the fourth wave, and the fifth wave is underway. Very important. The fifth wave should start first before you start doing that exercise to forecast the end of the fifth wave. So the fifth wave is now starting. Now the question is that where will it end? We want to have a bit of idea where the fifth wave is likely to end. We will use Fibonacci ratio 61.8%. 
Before that, we use the high of the third year wave, minus the low of the first wave, multiplied by 61.8%. That number that we get for the Dow Jones is exactly 5399. Now, the number that we get, we will add it to the low of the fourth wave. Is it getting too complicated for you? All right, it's not difficult, isn't it? It's just adding numbers, it's not difficult, it's not pure math, all right, it's no algorithm, all right, <laughs> okay? So it's not complicated, nothing special. So high, the high of the third wave minus the low of, uh, okay, the first wave, you get one number. That number you multiply by 61.8%. There you get another number. The number that you'll get after multiplying by 61.8%, you will add it, add it to the low of the fourth wave, and that will give you a key level. So you will see that my fourth wave is a bit messy here. This is what we talk about, all the nouns of the second and the first wave. So if the second wave is simple, there's a high chance that the fourth wave may be a little bit complex. It looks to me that it looks, it look, it's looking a bit complex here. We see about double bottom, blah, blah, blah here. You see a triangle and so on. So. With that Messi's fourth wave here, okay, all right, which we talked about before, uh, I don't, you on my chart, what I did, you can see that the price went down here. So first time you see it came down, that is boom. And then it went up and then it came down again here. I didn't use this low here. I have a reason for it, why I didn't use this low here. All right, because this is the first low here. Personally, my friend, personally, I prefer the low of this candlestick bar here. So you can go ahead to check the low, the real low of the fourth wave is this candlestick bar here at uh, 15450, 15450. That's the low of this candle here. But I did not use that low. I used instead the first low here, this one. That's my personal, okay, conservative, okay, style. So I'm using the low of this candlestick bar, which is what? That low is, uh, if you check this session, check this session, keep your eyes there, you'll see that low is what? 15370. 15370. That's correct, okay? That's the low of that KDC bar. So the number that we get, which is 5399, will add it to the low of, uh, okay, that KDC bar. So 5399 plus 15370 is equal, all right, is equal to 20769, 20769. So that's the red line on top here. I'll change the color into orange for now, so you may see it on my chart. That's the orange line here. So the professional area wave trader or the area wave expert will be expecting the Dow Jones in normal condition if the bullish momentum continues to go to this zone of 20769. How did we get that, that number, 20769? We use the high of the third wave minus the low of the first wave. Then we get, okay, uh, a number that is equal to 8737. That number, we multiply it by Fibonacci ratio, 61.8%. By multiplying 8737 by 61.8%, we got 5399. Now we add the 5399 to the low of the fourth wave. I'm using this low here for the fourth wave, which is 15370. Therefore, 15370 plus 5399 is equal to 20769. This is the level of uh, uh, the, 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 pro, uh, the, the expectation that if in normal condition, this is a, re a key resistance for the Dow Jones, a possible okay, top for the market. By using a Fibonacci ratio, 61.8%, we have a bit of idea that the Dow Jones, if, repeat, this, one, this is the attitude I want you to get, if it continues to go up, don't think that, it will go there. No, no, no. Don't, don't think that way. If it continues to go down, go up and come near this level, there's a high chance that it will start changing direction. That's all. This is our expectation. We have a bit of idea what can happen.
by now. We wait for it to happen. All right? So, okay? So we know that, okay, we should be giving priority to bullish signal, but only above 153, 183, above, uh, okay, 18353. I told you, you before, all right? Check that video, okay? All right? So we have the, 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 the target, okay? We have forecast the possible, possible end of the fifth wave. I'm choosing my word carefully. Possible end of the fifth wave. What I'm trying to do by uh, talking to you like this is uh, to prepare you so you do not use the area wave like a lot of uh, okay other traders are doing. Okay, I want you to be more okay conservative, more professional when you are using the area wave like you are dealing with uh, a lot of money and you don't want to lose. Okay, first rule, not to lose. Second rule, do not forget the first rule that stated that do not lose. Okay, so that's what we are doing here. So forecast two zero seven six nine. Will it go there? That remain to be seen. All right. So if for the price to go above that level, to go to the target level two zero seven nine two zero seven six nine to reach that level, it must first break above the eight the one. It must close. It must first break the ball. The resistance at one eight three five one, and then we find the support, and then start go displaying high lows high high before it can reach that level, one step at a time. Okay. Now this is what the market analyst, the area where expert, are aware of that level for the Dow Jones two zero seven six nine. Okay, but personally, okay. I will tell you another thing that you can do. Apart from using the 61.8% that a lot of experts will use, I recommend to 248 year wave subscribers to use also the 38.2% okay, ratio. So, what do I mean? So, we we'll compute the high of the third area wave minus the low of the first wave. Okay, in this case, it's equal to 8737. And then we multiply it by 38.2%. If you do that, you'll get 3337, 3337. And then you add 300, 3000, you add 3337 to the low of our fourth area wave. I'm using this one here. And you will have another conservative target for the end of the fifth wave that is equal to. 18707. So instead of having only one target for the for the end of the fifth wave at 20769, now we have two targets. The first target we are using the Fibonacci ratio 61.8%. My recommendation is to use a, also also the 38.2% Fibonacci ratio to have another target for the a fifth area wave. By doing that for the Dow Jones, we have another target at 18707. That level, look carefully, my friend, is I can place it. Let's see if I can place it on my chart. It's somewhere here. See, it's quite close. 187, uh, 18707. You see, it's just a little bit above the high of this candle. So you can imagine that. I'm not the only one watching that level. So there are other professionals that are aware of that level that is quite close to this line here, to the high of this candle here. So the high of that candle, if you keep watching this session here, the high, the, the top of the market that we have achieved so far is exactly 18668. 18668. But by computing, okay, the 38.2 percent. Of the difference between the high of the third in the way and the low of the first wave is bringing us a, to the target of 18707 which is just a little bit above the high that we have achieved so far so can you see that it has been useful to use also the 38.2 percent all right so be aware of it so when you want to use a fibonacci ratio to forecast the end of the fifth wave do not use only all right 61.8%. Use both 61.8% and 38.2%. You can see here the 38.2% method is very, very useful for us because that's where the price is finding resistance now. Okay, that level for the Dow Jones is at 
0.8707. Isn't it powerful to use Fibonacci ratio to have a bit of idea where the fifth wave is likely to go? But the challenge that we face first is to count the wave correctly. So if your wave count is wrong, you may get it wrong. But it will be useful in all cases by applying this method, which the most important thing is that you do not violate okay, the basic area wave principle, all right? So here we are. So by using my wave count here, first wave, second wave, third wave, fourth wave, and the fifth wave, you can see that I'm not the only area wave uh, trader that is counting the wave as I'm doing now, because you can see that the market is finding a resistance at a 38.2%, okay, multiplied by, okay, 8737, all right? Are you getting it now? Very simple. You can apply this method on any time frame. All you need to do is to know the high of, okay, the third wave. You want to know the low of the first wave. That's all you need to know, two things. The high of the third area wave and the low of the first wave. Now, first step, first step, my friend, the high of the third area wave minus the low of the first wave for the Dow Jones is equal to 8737. Good. Then you multiply that number by 61.8% or 38.2%. You need to do both. So first you'll do 61.8%. By doing that for the Dow Jones, it will get 5399. That result will add it to the low of the fourth wave, and that will give us the first target for the end of the fifth wave. Then we will also use the 38.2%, which means the high of the third area wave minus the low of the first wave, multiplied by 38.2%, plus the low of the fourth wave, that will give us, okay, the first target, the first minimum target for the end of the fifth wave. This is how we can use a Fibonacci ratio Okay, to forecast the end of the fifth wave. Is it too complicated for you? No, just to calculate. So if you don't know how to calculate, you can use a, a calculator to calculate, to help you, all right? The high and the low, the high of the third wave and the low of the first wave, that's all. With those two numbers, you can multiply them by 61.8%, you get a result, you add it to the low of the fourth wave, all right? And then you will do, you, you use again uh, the high of the third area wave minus the low of the first wave. You multiply it by 38.2%. And then you add it to the low of the fourth wave. If we were in a downtrend, what will you do? You will now add it to the low of the fourth wave. What will you do? So in a downtrend, we'll see something like this. Because the market... The normal progression of the market is up. That's why I'm using a bullish example. You will notice that in my video, uh, I'm pleasing more, all right, the bullish traders, all right, okay, because the natural progression of the market is bullish. And also, a lot of uh, our subscribers and Americans, and Americans, and, uh, and Americans are quite bullish. They like the market to go up forever. Okay, so now... <laughs> Okay, so in a downtrend, you will not add that number to the low of the fourth wave. That would be completely wrong. You will use the high, repeat, in a downtrend in order to use Fibonacci ratio to forecast the end of the bearish fifth wave. We will use the high of the fourth wave minus what we get. What do you mean by what we get? All right, so we'll use in a downtrend. How do we do it? We use the low. Okay, so it will be like this. So here we are. We will use instead the low. Oh, here we are. So that in fact, this is not the low. We, we will use instead the high. So we use the high, okay, of the second wave, okay, the high of the second wave minus the high. Uh, oh, 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 where are we? Where are we? Oh. Okay, hold on, traders, one second. I need to drink something here. Hold on, please. Correction traders. In a downtrend, we'll use uh, the high of the first wave minus the low of the third area wave. The high of the first wave minus the low of the third area wave. So that will give us one figure. That figure we will multiply by 61.8%. All right. 
and then we will use uh, okay so when we multiply that by 61.8 percent we get another result okay now we'll use okay the high of the fourth wave minus that result to get uh, the end of the fifth wave are you getting it now all right so the high of the first wave in a downtrend minus the low of uh, the third wave we get one result that result will multiply it by 61.8 percent okay then we get another result that last result we now use the high of the fourth wave minus that result okay to get the next okay forecast for this the, the end of the fifth bearish wave we'll use the high of the first bearish wave minus the low of the bearish uh, minus the low of the third bearish wave we get one result then we multiply by that by 38.2 percent okay that's the last result that last result we use again the high of the fourth wave minus the last result so what i'm calling the last result is the high of the first wave minus the low of the third in your way multiply by 61.8 percent or the high of the first wave minus the low of the third in your way multiplied by 38.2 percent that is what i'm calling okay the last result that last result in a downtrend will use the high of the fourth wave minus that last result and will get okay the estimation of the end of the fifth bearish wave All right. If you have any question or suggestion or comment, put in the comment section and into calls. I will be busy recording another video to answer your specific question. To summarize this video, we are using a Fibonacci ratio, 61.8%, and we are also using 38.2% Fibonacci ratio. Those two ratios will help us to forecast the possible end of the fifth area wave, either in an uptrend or in a downtrend. In an uptrend. How do we get to that uh, forecast? We use the high of the third wave minus the low of the first wave. We multiply either by 38.2% or 61.8%. That result will be added to the low of the fourth Elliott wave. In a downtrend, what we will do, we'll compute okay, the difference between the high of the first wave and the low of the third Elliott wave. Then we multiply either by 61.8% or 38.2%. That result will use the high of the fourth in your way minus that last result to get okay uh, uh, the forecast for the fifth idiot way. I hope I have made myself clear or I have explained this clearly to you, all right, that you have, will find this video useful. But the, the, the best approach, as I always say to trainers, you learn something new for the first time. Uh, use a demo account practice and learn and master it as you start uh, using it uh, practicing okay you are trying to put it now into you you will see a uh, different challenges all right now in order to uh, make better decision i will rem i will recommend that you also use market geometry so you see a channel like this so we talk about how we forecast the, the end of the fifth wave using Pitchfork tool using a Fibonacci extension using area wave channels. Do not forget all those things. So as you are applying now, now that you are using the Fibonacci ratio, don't forget everything now that we have discussed before. The other methods that professional are using to determine the end of the fifth wave and again do not fall into the trading mistake that a lot of area wave traders are making which means uh, they will expect their expectation to be exactly what the price will do and they will go before the price don't go before the price so now that we see that the price came quite close to the the, the, the second target which is 18707 for the for the uh, Dow Jones you can see that the price is found a bit of resistance here as an area wave uh, okay uh, analyst we know that there is uh, a target here so we are monitoring 
monitoring the reaction reply here. If we receive a sharp signal below that level of 18707, we will take it. All right, we will take it because we know that there is a target there. But if it breaks above that target and find a support, we will be looking up to the next target at 2069 because we know something that other traders do not know. Then, if it's taking place, we have an edge and we take advantage of it. But we do not want to rush and be aggressive and uh, throwing all our seven onto one basket saying that definitely george i believe you last time you said it it happened exactly that way now that you are saying it george don't fool me it's going to happen exactly that don't do that okay don't do that this video is for educational purposes only it's not a solicitation or an offer to buy or sell any financial instrument all right very very important this is the end of uh, this tutorial about uh, simple wave forecast, uh, a simple Fibonacci wave forecast, a trading method. I hope you will find it useful and will put it into use to improve uh, your wave uh, forecast. We are the TSTWSYS008 traders talking about a simple uh, Fibonacci wave forecast, a trading method. Wish you the very best in your trading. And until the next time, enjoy yourself and be very happy. Speak to you soon.